Hey, what's up, Kim peeps? What in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to design and or interpret the results of an experiment involving a redox titration. All right, I know titrations are everyone's favorite thing to do. Let's break it down a little bit. You want to be able to, number one, identify the substances being oxidized and reduced in a redox titration. Number dose. Explain how the equivalence point relates to the stoichiometric relationship between the reactants in a redox titration. And numero three, perform a redox titration in order to calculate the concentration of an unknown. All right, let's do this. Okay, so a redox titration is just a titration that we know and love, but it's based on a redox reaction between the analyte and the titrant. Important to know that when you perform a redox titration, that if you do not get a well-defined color change at the equivalence point, you need to use an indicator. With a redox titration curve, the plot is electrode potential voltage versus volume of your titrant. Not to be confused with an acid base titration, which is a plot of pH against volume of titrant. There are some similarities between the two types of titrations. In both an acid base and a redox titration, you are using volumetric analysis, or you're very carefully adding volume to determine number of moles, and then using the stoichiometric relationship to tell you something about your analyte. Important difference though is in acid base, it's pH against volume, whereas in a redox titration, it's voltage against volume when you're generating your curves. Boom, it's like you're in the lab. First thing you're gonna do is choose an oxidizing agent. I like potassium permanganate because of its beautiful purple color. You'll be provided with your overall redox reaction. Notice that we're reacting the permanganate with iron two ion in acidic conditions. We're told the molarity of our potassium permanganate solution and we know that we have 25 mils of our unknown concentration iron two ion. Let's start dropping in that titrant. Now you should really be more careful than I am being, but we're looking for a defined color change. Ah, nuts, I went too far. It's okay, let's just repeat it. Now that we know about how much it takes, we can go a little more intense. Yeah, titration. Notice, did you notice the color change stayed a little bit longer? I think I'm gonna just go to Iowa State so I can do these titration simulations all the time. All right, now we are going to add dropwise here. Woo, color change. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the molarity and volume of my potassium permanganate solution. I'm gonna multiply my molarity by my volume to get my number of moles of potassium permanganate that I added. Boom! Yes, I used a calculator. Next, let's think about the relationship between permanganate ion and iron two in our balanced redox reaction. That relationship is a five, boom, to one relationship, which means that I must have had 0.0233 moles of iron two in my flask originally. I can then take that number of moles, divide it by the original 25 mil sample to determine the concentration of my iron two ion. And then the great thing about this is you can check your work. Boom, I am correct. So if you're looking for fun on a Friday night, this simulation is the place to be. Also, seriously consider Iowa State. This titration animation alone would be enough for me to apply. Boom, people, and we are done. 